Hey everybody, welcome back to the Master Wing channel. Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, this is a continuation of a series playlist I'm calling Wingspan Workshop, where we are dissecting some of the decisions um, and kind of just breaking down basic strategy for new players to wingspan. So if you don't know what this is, you might want to check out the other videos in the description because we are hopping right into round two. For the wax wing player, uh, they don't have many good cards in hand, so we are going to draw cards here. Uh, we don't have much egg generation. You can see our grassland is empty, so we pick up the red start. And the white stork is one of the best cards in the game. We will follow back up on that card, but fortune favors the bold, and we were lucky on that turn to draw something nice. And the kingfisher player, we get a free card because the sandpiper lets every player draw from the deck when that brown power is activated. I kind of want to build out this grassland. That is, um, along with the goals, if you see round four goal, birds in the grassland, and also an egg laying goal in round three, eggs in a platform nest, that's our long-term play. But we don't have great food generation and there are no rats in the tray. So we are leaning towards a draw cards turn here. Here we go. And we have Food Web Expert and Prairie Manager. We go ahead and take a rat in hopes to play the Swainson's Hawk next. And here's a really exciting player. I think the Spoonbill, the purple player. We've. I'll try not to repeat myself too much from the other videos, but they were given a great hand with Odwins, Chiff Chaff, and Ruddy Duck, and we were able to get the Purple Martin down early on with all the free food that's been handed out. So um, this player I think is favored right now, but I have seen the end score here and it's crazy. So please stick around. Uh, you might be surprised at who wins or how high the scores are. Uh, we lay eggs there just in hopes to get some free food and a fifth bird down. Here we are with the Puffin player. And if you remember, we were trying to show off the white wagtail and that teal power, but we ended up getting a wood duck, which is kind of hidden in my hand there. But the wood duck is one of the best cards in the game for new players that don't know. If it is in the tray and you're playing against someone who knows what they're doing or has played wingspan before, you probably want to grab that early on in the game or at least deny it from your opponent. So I think we're gonna pivot here. I think I've said this in previous videos, but we're going to grab the necessary food for a wood duck, move the song sparrow down, and a potential, I think, for a double play with uh, this, I think it's a woodpecker in my hand. So we're thinking a couple of turns ahead. This one, this player was especially complicated just because the wagtail and the rough had some extra planning and a migratory song sparrow. So uh, just re-familiarizing ourselves with these player hands. Hopefully you've seen the previous videos, so we won't have to explain and introduce everything. But uh, by all means, I hope this is helpful. We're, we're trying to show how you can score well no matter what you're given. And here we are with the owl player. I think they were the first player. Uh, to go in round one and they were dealt a, a tough hand. We we did pick up a hummingbird and a towie But a brown pelican isn't super great And now we have an osprey down to try to draw more cards because that player is kind of the underdog right now So here we are with the waxwing player again that drew this white stork and I said in the previous video that you want to find cards that let you combine actions like gaining food in the wetlands or in the white storks case, we're going to play it and be able to see cards while laying eggs, while scoring points. So that's our strategy going forward and we need the food to do so. So you, as a new player, you're kind of thinking, what do I want to play and how do I play it? Do I need some eggs? Do I need some food? That will try to dictate your turns. If you're just thinking one turn ahead, sometimes there's a, a disconnect and it slows up your game. So we grabbed food there and uh, hopeful to get that white stork down. Kingfisher. 
um, player is going to play Swainson's just like we thought. That helps me with my Prairie Manager bonus card that uh, needs birds that only live in the grassland. So I actually like the Peregrine Falcon a little bit better. Um, actually, a lot better. But the Swainson's Hawk is better for the bonus card. You know what we're doing with the Spoonbill player. We are going to be drawing a lot of cards this game. And this is one way to score. This is what's called a full tuck, where you are fully committed to scoring points by tucking cards. Team, this snow bunting card that you're seeing um, is a really good card. Anytime a player tucks a card for any reason, you get to tuck a card um, as a pink power. Plus, we have Bird Counter. That was pretty much a no-brainer to grab the Snow Bunting. I'm hopeful we can score some extra points there. And then in the back, we have a really solid tucking bird, the Common Chiff Chaff, that can go in the wetlands and tuck up to five cards. If you have five birds in the wetlands, you can tuck five cards. Right now, we only have four. So we are going to be selective here. And we're scoring one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, six points already just by that four card engine. And we've been uh, pr pretty lucky because the other uh, players have been handing out extra food. We'd still get these birds down, but usually you'd have to spend a couple turns in the, in the bird feeder, the gain food action, to get these birds down and we just have it so it's uh, really looking good for the spoonbill player and uh, the game is flying by we are back to the puffin player and it looks like this double play is a go with the downy woodpecker into wood duck and broken record here but the wood duck lets you draw cards in the forest one of the best forest birds you can get. And we're moving off of the wagtail strategy because now I don't see myself having to go into that wetlands for that player. Here we are with the owl player. Um, again, not much in hand that we want to play. Grassland, I mean, uh, forest birds are not our strategy here. We have ways to gain food. We need another bird to build our game around in the grassland trumpeter swan will work we have the food for it and it's a nice what they call a bird bomb it doesn't have any power it just scores you a bunch of points and that's what the trumpeter swan does we go ahead and skip the osprey uh, just because we're we have enough food and there's no sense in uh, passing out more food to our opponent and here we go with white stork a nice eight point play not only does the white stork draw cards, but it resets the tray. So, like, this tray right now isn't super exciting, but that reset, we get to pick the best one. It's just such an awesome card. The white stork is one of the best cards in the game as well. And honestly, new players to Wingspan, that's part of getting better at this game, is just knowing which cards are good. And, and that's usually not going to happen unless you've... You know, study the game. I'm sure there's a, a tier list out there somewhere. But just knowing what's good, that that may come with experience and like, man, I really should have grabbed that bird or that bird worked out and that didn't. Um, so just learning what's good, I think, is a huge tip on getting better. And here we go. We're flipping over to the owl because my Swainson's hawk was successful on a tuck. And we are going to lay eggs in hopes to eventually play some more birds. We're trying to play each of these hands competitively as if we don't know what the other players have. And I'm trying to play each hand as if, you know, obviously we want to win. So um, I'm trying not to have a cooperative game here where we purposefully help another player. The Spoonbill. Um... No, no, nothing surprising here. We're, we're going to continue to draw cards, and we're scoring six points, right, for every wetland action so far. I'm really trying to get that fifth bird. We have a black bird in our hand that lets me tuck and lay eggs. So I'm, I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs here. Um, six-point turn is awesome. 
but we are hoping for some extra food to play a fifth bird. And it's just so satisfying to tuck those cards, especially on the digital version. Sometimes when you're playing in real life, it's a little awkward to try to tuck all those cards underneath one and you take the eggs off. But just clicking and tucking on this monster couch version, in my opinion, is just so satisfying. All right, the Puffin Player. Uh, it's definitely okay to look at other people's boards. It's, it's encouraged if you are trying to be competitive and good at wingspan. Uh, the wood duck, we have no eggs. And uh, we don't have anything exciting in our hand. So I think we uh, gain food here. And while we gain food, we activate wood duck to see some more cards. Taking a peek at our end of round goal is food cost of played birds. And I've mentioned in earlier videos that in a five player game, those end of round goals are not as important in my opinion. Um, in a 1v1 game where it's just two players, those can be very game deciding and uh, divisive because it's either or, right? But in a five player game, there's so many different opportunities to, to win. And, you know, some new players might focus solely on that goal only to receive a couple more points. And in the long term of this game, when there's only 26 turns, was it better to focus on that goal? Or should you have been, you know, accelerating your board, building that engine, getting some synergy with some of your other birds? So just keep that in mind that the goals in a five player game, in my opinion, are not as hugely deciding. Here we go with a big bird bomb here, the Trumpeter Swan. There's really nothing else to do with this player because there's not many other cards. We're moving right along to the Wax Wing, and I'm happy with how every board has progressed, but uh, now that we have food access for this player, we have card access, we need something to go along with this grassland. Because the white stork is good, but we need to utilize that brown power and have some complementary birds in that grassland. And here we go. See what the white stork gives us. And not the best reset we've ever seen. The vulture isn't really necessary. Neither is the tree sparrow. We go with the avocet because it lets you lay eggs on other birds with a ground nest. And in a five-player game, again, pink powers activate a lot more often there's more opportunities for you to get free resources so pink powers are usually your friend um, that being said the vulture and the tree sparrow we we have ways of getting food so um, those might not be as coveted right now at this point in the game and with the kingfisher player we are going to go ahead and draw cards again we're going to get that black crown night heron it is nine points i'm not sure if we're going to use its brown power but it lets you discard an egg to receive whatever food you want and we have birds in the forest with this player but there's not any extra food you gain two food and that's it we don't have any brown powers in the forest so you've seen, obviously, this player's using their Blue Throat and Nightingale a lot more often to get exactly the type of food they need. And we picked up a nice nine-point card. I'm hoping this player plays the Peregrine and the Knight, the Black Crown Night Heron. Um, I'm hopeful for the Kingfisher, trying to make uh, something good happen on their board. Back to the Spoonville player, I saw in a previous video we have a couple comments that think this player is the one to win this game, but we will see uh, because there's still a lot of time left, a lot of things can happen. Taking a look at the other players' boards, seeing if they could want or use anything in the tray. That one player has the buzzard, which lets you gain worms at the end of the round. And that could pair well with the common swift in the tray. So I'm wondering if we take the common swift just to deny it for my opponent. Also, that wood duck 
Um, if they're going to be gaining a lot of food, I'm hoping we deny this swift. Yep, there we go. Um, because they could discard all those extra worms for Tux at the end of the round. And uh, the fun part about this board is the decisions are basically um, if it beats six points, you can keep it. Um, if, if it doesn't, you know, we're, we're tucking it. And um, that's the beauty of the full tuck. I like where we're going there. The Puffin, getting some free resources there. Not a lot going on. That Wood Duck didn't give us a lot of good stuff last time. So we're going to continue trying to pick up something nice here. There is that Eurasian Nutcracker in the tray. Um, this is an after-the-fact analysis We've, we're trying to speed up the footage, but also explain what's going on. If that Nutcracker's still there, I'm wondering if this player picks it up because the Nutcracker lets you cash up to five seeds on five different birds. And with a forest engine, that may be something to grab next time. Might have been an oversight there playing that Puffin player. And we just have three forest birds with this player. It just seems like the cards are stacked against him, but trying to make some lemonade out of lemons. Three three low point forest birds are the exact opposite pretty much of what we want. You could play those for a bonus card, but there's a lesson there. You don't just play something just for bonus cards. I mean, we have a combined six points there when you could be scoring a lot of other ways. And look what we pick up, just more low points. That is how the game goes sometimes. And, you know, I, I would anticipate the next turn we draw cards again because that was pretty trash. Um, what is going on with this player? Trying to get into the headspace of each one as if this was our only chance, our only hand. We could play Black Red Start. We could gain food again for the Avocet, uh, the Mergancer, and that Tuckbird, that Vose Swift. There's probably a lesson there. I, I said in earlier videos, you want to look out for Tuckbirds. But a two-point Tuckbird in the forest at, at almost the end of uh, round two, that, that doesn't mean you should play every Tuckbird, right? We're still looking for something better. Looks like we are going to go ahead and gain some food and try to get this Avocet down or the Black Red Start. We will see. I think the Avocet is better because it's six points and I can get some free eggs. <clears throat> right. And here we go. Um, we have the food for the Black Crown Night Heron. Trying to remember each decision, each player. Uh, of course, as always, let me know in the comments if you would have done something differently or who you think is winning this game. Um, trying to make the most of it here. Our Food Web Expert bonus card isn't really doing anything. And I was hoping we play this bird, the nine point black crowned knight heron. It's an eight point play once you take the egg cost. Trying to make the most of every turn, and uh, maybe we use that brown power to get the Peregrine Falcon down. And this player still has not received that extra food we've talked about. I'll try not to repeat myself every time, but it's pretty straightforward here. You know what we're doing. We're drawing cards, we're tucking. And remember that snow bunting is still in our hand. Um, I'd like to get that down if possible, but maybe the other players aren't sharing as much and maybe it doesn't happen, we'll see. But with our bonus card, I think the snow bunting needs to be top priority along with that blackbird. All right, I think we laid eggs next turn. We moved that, I mean, uh, last turn, we laid eggs and put that Song Sparrow back up in the grassland. So now we can draw, I mean, uh, gain more food from the bird feeder with three. 
and check it out we're getting seeds i'm really thinking the the eurasian nutcracker is the move here because we have a robin at the front of this forest engine which is nice we can tuck and we can cash and this is also um, for new players for migratory birds like this song sparrow there's a lincoln sparrow there's several migratory birds and you want to take your time with those just because you can move it to another habitat doesn't mean always that you should um, we are going to move it down to the grassland to get it out of the way and then the eurasian nutcracker can go down check it out we drew another great card one of the best cards in the game benelli's eagle we will highlight that next time we get to that player and here we go with the yellow owl player this this poor player is uh continuing to draw trash there's a wren where we could draw some extra cards um, you can see these powers just don't go along with the grassland engine. We want to have some brown powers that go along with laying eggs. If we could have snagged one tuck bird, it would have been helpful. But look what we do here. I'm hoping we pick up this red-winged blackbird in the tray. Maybe you noticed that. Maybe you didn't. There we go. The blackbird can go down and score some extra points. It's not the flashiest bird, but it is a tuck bird. And we're going to turn these extra useless cards into two points. So, so hang around. Hit that subscribe button. Can't wait to show you round three and round four. Again, these scores get crazy. American Avocet uh, going down just like we wanted. And only one turn left in round two. We probably draw cards or lay eggs with that player next. And this is this Kingfisher is probably everybody's favorite player if you are pretending to be in this game because this blue throated nightingale has helped so many other players with extra food. And that's the give and take with those birds. You, you gain food while performing the lay eggs or draw cards action. But in this game, I'm thinking my other hands, the other players are making better use of it. So that's something to think about, especially if you're playing somebody who's a veteran. Handing out free food all the time is probably not the best idea. And it looks like we drew cards here. Trying to get something good. I'm thinking uh, we get this Peregrine Falcon down. The Savannah Sparrows possible. And we're just debating how to add on to this Swainson's Hawk. For more grassland. You can see me say that over and over again. The grassland, at least on the base game, new players... A lot of games, a, a lot of hands, except for this player right here, end up in the grassland because drawing cards doesn't inherently give you points. Gaining food doesn't inherently gain you points. But laying eggs is always points. So if you can kind of migrate your hand towards a grassland engine, you're going to eventually score a lot of points. Just trust me. And we're a little behind of the game, but we were able to get that fifth bird down for the Spoonbill player. The Puffin player, so this Benelli's Eagle, it says three rats, but you can play it using three cards instead of three rats. So it turns into an 11-point play. So the Benelli's Eagle is going to be a great bird bomb later. And we get the Eurasian Nutcracker down just in time before the end of the round. Uh, we may have a decent game with that wood duck. And this player, um, it looks like we have zero eggs. So you tell me, what's the decision here? You can't play any more birds until you lay eggs. And so I'm really hoping we can get this red-winged blackbird down. And you can see we have about six extra cards in our hand that we really don't want. 
but the red winged blackbird lets you tuck a card underneath it and lay an egg. So um, I'm really hoping to make use of that. And just like we said, we can't do anything until we lay eggs. I think I should have discarded an extra food here for an extra egg, but maybe I'm holding on to this extra food in hopes to play something big next time. We skip on the hummingbird and we get that seed from the toey to play the blackbird next. And what would you do here? The last round for the wax wing. Red start, hooded mergancer, and pleated woodpecker. It's a little late, it feels like, for the woodpecker. We go with the red start, and you'll see that teal power activate in a second. Some players will avoid playing zero point birds when you're new because you think they're just automatically bad. And this red start may help me in the long run, you'll see. It lets you lay eggs on a habitat that doesn't have any eggs on it at the end of the round. Oh man, we just tucked uh, with the Swainson's Hawk the Kill Deer, which is, again, one of the best cards in the game. You will find that out. Try out the Kill Deer. You're not going to see it in this game, though. And we grabbed another rat. I'm thinking this Peregrine Falcon is coming up. And round three is going to go hard. It is going to accelerate quickly. I see some double plays coming. That Eurasian Nutcracker is going to be cashing. I'm going to be getting a lot of birds down, I think, in round three. Scoring a lot more points than in round one and two. And this Spoon Mill player, I just have to say, um, I probably shouldn't say it's my favorite because we're trying to be objective here. But now we have a one, two, three, four... Is this a nine point engine, guys? This is a nine point engine very early on in the game with that yellow headed blackbird down. Check it out. They were dealt pretty much the dream hand for a, for a tuck scenario. I'm all about it. And uh, we're just making sure we're tucking the right thing. Sometimes you can get a little click happy while you're playing the digital version. And it just gives you so much flexibility to have, you know, 6, 7, 10, 20 cards in your hand. It's going to happen, but but it allows you options um, to win end-of-round goals, to score bonus points, etc. And here we are, back to the Puffin. We've got plenty of food. We don't have quite enough cards to play Benelli's Eagle. Remember, you need three cards, and you tuck it under Benelli's Eagle as, as their food cost. So you really don't need three rats. And it turns into an 11-point bird. So like I said, it's one of the best cards in the game, and you can play it in any habitat. New players, if this is in the tray, please grab it. Because uh, I played with a group recently, and they overlooked it, and I just wanted to take the moment and pause because it's, it's a good card. That's all I can say. And check it out. What can this wood duck give us? We did cash some seeds with the Nutcracker. We've maxed out our Viticulturist bonus card for seven points. I think we were debating that Grossbeak, but we did not take the Grossbeak. The Grossbeak may be okay, because it gives you an extra seed if it's in the bird feeder. I think that's what I'm thinking here, because we're going to get to tuck a card with the Robin. And there's also an argument to play that, um, that Nuthatch that we have in our hand. Because it caches. We end up drawing blind from the deck, and... Uh, the Barn Swallow can be good, but not in that scenario. Not the best turn on the Wood Duck guy. We did get to see more cards. We did cash for the Nutcracker, and we did uh, tuck with the Robin. And as usual, the or as expected, the Red Winged Blackbird goes down. I'm happy with that. And American Avocet coming through, laying some extra eggs. And our Teal Powers need to activate this Honey Buzzard. 
I love the honey buzzard and I hate the honey buzzard because you never know if it's going to work and it does work this time, thankfully. And the red start gave me three extra eggs at the end of the round. So that was nice. That's right. The rough uh, has the teal power that lets you tuck up to three cards from your hand. Um, I'm thinking we get rid of all three of these in hopes to get something better. We do not, we only tuck two, is that right? I think we're holding on to the nut hatch, potentially playing that as the fifth card. But we pick up a Juniper Titmouse, which, which does the same thing. I'm thinking that's a round three play. Guys, this is a neck and neck game. This is closer than you think. Hang around, subscribe for round three gameplay. There's a Raven in the tray. Thanks for watching, here's some round two tips. See ya.